Michigan has its biggest test not really yet necessarily, but it's certainly the biggest test of the season given what happened in week two against Texas. And that is with a resurgent USC coming to town on Saturday. We are going to discuss what this new look Michigan team will be with none other than Trent A. Jones on this episode of Running Power on this episode of Locked On Wolverines. You are Locked On Wolverines. Your daily podcast on the Michigan Wolverines, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Friday. We are back and doing it. Locked On Wolverines podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. I'm your man on the ground, Isaiah Hole, publisher of Wolverines Wire through USA Today Sports Media Group. Over to my side there is former Michigan right tackle Trent A. Jones back after a week off. Super excited to have you back. Super excited for this game, man. Man, I can't wait to get after it. I just know that the Wolverines are going to bounce back after that Texas loss. I know that they did a lot better in that next week, following week. Um, but I do know that they have some things in store, so I can't wait to get after it. Well, obviously, the the big news going into this week, and you're going to have a little bit more uh, ability to talk about this than most others, and that is bringing in Alex Orgy as the new starting quarterback uh, obviously, there's a lot of questions outside of Beckler all about his ability to throw the football. Uh, I've, I've been all week saying that Michigan needs to do exactly what your shirt says, which is run the, the damn ball if uh, you're listening and not watching. And uh, that with Orgy, that this can kind of reset things offensively. So tell me, what, what does Orgy bring to the table and how does that potentially change the offense for Michigan this week? I feel like being able to to get after the freaking front seven with Alex Orgy's ability to run will keep them honest. And I feel like with their um, their Orgy's ability to throw down the field accurately will definitely keep a lot of defenses on their toes, specifically USC's revamped defense. They got a lot of, I wouldn't say a lot, but they got like a few cue pieces on um, the transfer portal, but I don't think that's going to be enough to stop Alex Orgy. Him being able to run and being able to run QB power option RPOs is going to add a new element that might not necessarily have had the same threat that Davis Warren did um, in the following weeks. Alex Orgy can throw the ball down the field. He can run the ball. Obviously, he's a hard runner, definitely hard to take down. And look at him. He's a stud. This is a strong person that you don't just see every day. This is like... Um, Anthony Richardson, this is like a Cam Newton type build. This is a big person. He's might, might not be like 6'5". He's probably like 6'2", but that's still a big fella. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like being able to use him out as a runner and use Kalel Dono to block, lead block, Max Bredesen to lead block, that is going to be monumental. And I feel like that's one of the best ways to run the freaking game. Take the ball, run it downfield, use Alex Orgic. Well, let, let's I, I need you to kind of, you know, satiate some of those who are you know, obviously on the fence in a lot of ways because everyone kind of wanted Alex Orgy. Everyone was really I, I would say the vast majority of Michigan fans were hoping that he would win the starting job. I would venture to guess that those inside the building kind of wanted that as well. Uh, but when he came out and threw his third ever pass attempt, his second in the game in week one. It was a simple, you know, bootleg pitch and catch and falls very short. And suddenly everyone said, "Okay, that's why he's not the quarterback. But you've seen him a lot in practice. Is that indicative of his capabilities? Is he a lot better than that at throwing the football? Like where can he can he cross that 60 percent completion Rubicon that you kind of look for in quarterbacks? I do believe that he will be crossing that. I feel like he just hasn't had enough, you know, volume in games to be able to show that he can cross that. I've seen him throw crazy balls at practice. I've seen him throw very consistently, but it's going to be a matter of going to the game and actually producing that product. I've seen it with my own two eyes, so I know in my heart that I believe he can do that. But that's just going to be something that he has to cross mentally. And once he does, it's going to be very dangerous. How, how much does his running threat, like you mentioned, all the different uh, options that Michigan has at its disposal with uh, Orgy at the helm. 
Uh, but how, how much is, do you think that that opens up things for the other running backs? Because, yes, you, teams can essentially stack the box, you know, being like Michigan's going to run a lot unless Alex puts some pressure on them downfield. But nonetheless, like, how, how do you feel like it potentially just having the, the threat of, you know, him keeping, him handing off the different, uh, you know, and obviously the weapons that are there at running back, how, how do you think that that can improve the run game? Uh, assuming Michigan goes to it and sticks with it. I feel like using a lot of option plays and a lot of RPOs gives him a lot of versatility due to, um, you know, maybe only one person being able to get back there. If all 11 do their job, it's going to be a matter of one person playing better than two people. And I feel like out of 10 times, they win that nine, you know, 10 out of 10 times. Um, You know, you should win that. That's 2v1. So I feel like him being able to threaten that outside and, you know, make that person hesitate slightly, very slightly, gives us the advantage in any type of option runs or any type of plays where it's it could be the running back. It could be the QB because if it's no disrespect, but if it's like a a Manning, you know what I'm saying, versus a Cam Newton, you're going to play a little bit different. So if you get back there and you see Alex Orgy about to take it away, you might hesitate a little bit. So I feel like that in the back of people's minds is going to definitely um, affect a lot of defenses, especially this USC defense coming this weekend. Before we move on to some other positions, I I do have one more for you on Alex. And it's uh, because you you keep on mentioning the the different uh, options. You mentioned the RPOs. You were in that building last year when, granted, it was the J.J. McCarthy uh, experience, which was Absolutely. phenomenal. Everyone loved that. And, you know, five-star reviews all around. Uh, but how, how much of those RPOs and, uh, and and options are actually in – were at least last year built into the offense in case Alex Orgy was in there? Because I think that, to me, and maybe to a lot of other people, that's the fear is that he's going to come in – he has all of this ability, but kind of one of the things I've talked about all week is Michigan has not shown in the first three games that it is has a penchant for putting its players in the best position to succeed. Uh, the old Josh Gaddis line, uh, because it just feels like that you know, like that you've got a guy like Dono, get him in space. They don't do that, right? They just run him between the tackles, even though he can do it. He's best if you can get him in space. So my fear, and I'm sure others' fear is that they're just going to put Alex in and just say like, hey, Davis Warren did this, you do this now. What are your thoughts on what Michigan's adaptability given to what he can do? Well, all I can do is speak from what I know. And what I know is usually when things are not necessarily going how we want it, we do tend to go back to our roots, which is see who we have on our roster. When we had me as a backup right tackle, we put me in at tight end and we used that run game. So when you look at that as me as a tight end, that's a big tight end. What are you going to do when it's a different quarterback? You use that quarterback in different situations that benefits the team. So I do think that they will ask him to throw the ball. But at the same time, they do know that Alex Orgy is a very strong runner and when you use him as a runner and a quarterback and a, you know what I'm saying, a dual threat, I feel like we'll be very successful. So that's my two cents. All right, we're going to continue on. We've got a lot more to talk about as we preview this Michigan-USC game on Saturday. So we'll get to more here in just a moment. But before we do, one thing I got to tell you about is Robin Hood. And Robin, with Robin Hood Gold, you don't need a silver spoon to eat up financial flavors Sorry, financial favors of the 1%. Robinhood Gold allows others to get the rates and perks usually reserved for high society. Now, the resourceful individual with Robinhood Gold can earn the very liberal rate of 5% APY on uninvested cash, receive 1% deposit, unlimited, sorry, unlimited deposit bonuses, and be rewarded with a handsome 3% retirement boost on an IRA account. Robinhood Gold provides the privileges of a high net worth for any net worth. These generous benefits are now available for only $5 a month. The new gold standard is here with Robinhood Gold, so sign up at Robinhood.com slash gold. Terms apply for for product-specific disclosures. Visit Robinhood.com slash gold. Investing involves risk. 
Rates may change. Gold membership is offered by Robinhood Gold, LLC. All right, we're going to continue on here in just a moment. But before we do, uh, I got to tell you about uh, my favorite apparel company out there, and that is Homefield. College football season is well underway. You continuously need to gear up with the coolest Michigan apparel in the game. You've heard me talking about Homefield for years. You've seen me wearing it frequently. And if you don't know about Homefield, Homefield is a, a premium collegiate apparel company based out of Indianapolis. And there's no place that I would rather get my Michigan gear from with their retro modern style home field scours. Every school's history to find these amazing, unique designs that you're going to love and you're really going to stand out. Today, they just dropped a bunch of new heavyweight shirts and they are incredible. You can get your uh, national champion shirts. The Victor's Valiant shirt that they have is super cool. Uh, I have the, uh, the lightweight version of that, but you can get it in this brand new heavyweight style that is kind of all the rage right now. So go to homefieldapparel.com and use my code GOBLUE24 for 15% off of your first order. That's homefield.com. Sorry, I can't speak today. That's homefieldapparel.com. Promo code GOBLUE24. Get 15% off of your first order. Homefield Apparel, just the coolest college gear anywhere. All right, we're still here with Trent A. Jones, and uh, we're discussing all things Michigan USC with this Michigan offense. We're pretty much staying with the offense today uh, just because that's where the biggest changes are. Uh, certainly, we want to see things get better defensively. Michigan's going to need to if it is going to have a chance, uh, certainly. Uh, but one of the big concerns, and like we talked about running the ball, trying to say you're an offensive lineman. Uh, one of the issues that I had kind of seen, uh, everyone has kind of seen for the first couple weeks, is kind of looked a bit better in the run game and run protection last week is the offensive line. So what's your overall assessment of kind of where they are? I understand it takes some time for an offensive line to gel, but certainly this feels like a vast departure from kind of what we'd seen over the last three years. So delving right into the offensive line, I've seen a lot of changes um, throughout the positions on the O-line. The biggest one being the center with Dom and Crip. And I did notice a thing or two that is very, very, um, you know, exciting to see. I saw that when Crip came in, the communication seemed to be a lot more crisp and better between the tackles. I felt like everybody felt a little bit more comfortable no shade to anyone obviously but just from the outside looking in i know that crip is a very good communicator and when you ask trin say hey who are you gonna pick i'd pick crip for this game just to see how he handles being that guy who goes out there first obviously dom won the position so he did something that we didn't see but when we're out there i see that crip is going out there making points doing reads the double teams seem to be better in between the center and guard so I just know that, um, you know, with that change going to the O-line, it's going to be a huge benefactor to the run game. The run game is definitely going to have to be strong to beat this USC defense. I know that um, in between the tackles and guards, the left side seems to be a lot more strong than the right side. So leaning on them slightly to get the run game going is definitely going to be something that they need to look forward to during this game. And, um, you know, that's the run game. The pass game, I saw a few things here and there, but... As long as the communication is tight and um, sorry, tight and very um, precise by the center and guard, the tackles usually, usually get the job done. So I feel like with Crip out there being the field general or the quarterback of the O-line, it's definitely going to show some huge progressions in the right direction. You certainly hope that it does get better at your former position uh, because that's been kind of an issue. I've been saying all week, I've been kind of, uh, I've been kind of uh, emulating Silicon Valley. I can't remember the name of the character, Christian Matabla, however you say his name. <laughs> like yeah. I, I keep on saying, like, you want to, I want to see Evan Link like this, not like this. You know, it's instead of like this yeah. or like this. And if you're listening, you're just going to miss it all. I don't care. <laughs> uh, but, it, you know, like that's been the issue. And he did look a bit better in week three, but in weeks one and two, it just seemed like he could not keep himself upright. He was just kind of getting bulldozed at the point of attack. Mm -hmm. What what have you seen? What kind of have you seen from him improvement wise? And are you surprised? I mean, you spent one year with him. Are you surprised that it's been that much of a struggle for him in the early going? 
Um, you know, that is kind of surprising seeing that, um, you know, at practice, he was always, you know, locking people up as a freshman. So it is going to be something that I would like to see him improve on being a lot more stout. Obviously, he gained that 10, 15, 20 pounds over the offseason. So getting used to his new weight, being able to move as fluid as he did when I saw him, he was obviously like 30 pounds less. So um, I would like to see him use that body weight a little bit better using his arm strikes um, you know, and definitely just getting leverage on people, because at the end of the day, if you get your hands on the defensive lineman before they get their hands on you, it's going to be a lot better and easier to stay on your feet. So it's definitely going to be something, you know, that just progresses throughout the season. So, um, that's something that I would like to see him progress on. And I would also like to see, um, Gio and him be better on their communication and, um, you know, going through the run game, because I feel like that was something that wasn't as strong as the left side with miles and um preep which is you know it should be natural but you know this is a top tier offensive line we need them to be perfect so i would like to see them match if not surpass the left side there's definitely a lot of room for improvement across the board because michigan has yet to play anything close to resembling a perfect game a pretty good half with outside of the turnovers last week against arkansas state but Certainly, uh, <laughs> the defense and uh, and just the turnovers, they, they can stop doing those and having the penalties, then maybe things look a little bit different. Another offensive line one for you, uh, because I think a lot of us were surprised that it hadn't been Andrew Gentry, but he's gotten in there as a, in kind of your other role as a sixth man. And whenever he's been in there, I feel like he's been an absolute road grader. It just feels like... Like, why is he not the guy that's in just as right tackle? Uh, what what have you seen from him? And uh, again, to just kind of get your personal opinion, are you surprised that he hasn't been that bona fide right tackle? <clears throat> you know, so I've been in this exact situation before where it seems like the the sixth lineman is just being the most dominant lineman on the planet. And he, it should make sense for him to be the starter. But I've been in that position. And sometimes it's more than just what he looks like when he's out there for those few plays. Sometimes it's more than just what we see. Sometimes it's things outside of what we can control as viewers. And sometimes it's not as all as it seems. I feel like him being a really good run blocker on that sixth lineman is a very good key to see him being out there. But it could also mean that his pass isn't as good as Link. And, you know, overall, you would rather have somebody who is – 90 in the run game and 75 in pass than somebody who's 91 and 60 in the past. You understand? So overall, I feel like they know what they're doing. If that link is the person out there, he is the best option. So I feel like it's not something that we do need to worry about. And I do also think that Gentry being a great run blocker could also be more beneficial for him to be that sixth lineman rather than being the starter, because it does change. Once you get out there, it's a lot more different. You're tired more often. You're not out there for one or two plays. And, um, you know, packages definitely get, like I said earlier, it gives us the position to put him in a great position to block down, to have that one-on-one -on -one block, to not have to think and just go out there and block. So um, it's it's more than meets the eye. But, um, no, like you said, Rogue Grainer, he's actually destroying people, and it's beautiful. So um, let's just keep doing that. And if he is the starter, hey, that means that he got better. So regardless, I feel like we're all in the right direction and using him wherever we need to is going to be beneficial to this offensive line. Obviously, we all just want to see changes, for, not just for the sake of change, but for the sake of getting better. And I, uh -huh. I understand there is always a trust the coaches element that uh, that at least exists within the building. I tend to have it outside, but this coaching staff being new, despite a lot of these guys having been in the building, I think... It's hard to trust it when it hasn't been working. So it, hopefully they find a way to make it work. Let's talk about expectations and uh, maybe even predictions. I don't know. I've been on the fence about if we want to actually predict this game. <laughs> Until we actually know for sure what this team is, which I think this game will give us. But let's get to that, Trente, here in <laughs> just a moment. Before we do, passion, drive, and patience, the formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. 
eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because remember, you are burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive with ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit only available to U.S. customers. All right, we're going to continue on momentarily, but before we do, you've heard us talk a lot about FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Well, we've got a little something different for you now through Sunday. That's right, Sunday. All FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Then with a YouTube TV base plan, you'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon out-of-market game. That includes Trent Day's former head coach and Jim Harbaugh with the uh, with the Chargers over there. All you need is a Google account and a current form of payment, and you can cancel at any time. So just visit FanDuel.com and download America's number one sports book. All right, Trent Day, what... Uh, I know I didn't put this in our pre-show, but we're kind of changing because I think uh, we got through everything that I pretty much put in our pre-show is what I wanted us to talk about. Nice. So uh, that means we're efficient. We're very good at our jobs, except for the fact that we have to fill time because this is a timed show. Uh, nice. But uh, what what are the things that you are looking for the most in this game? Like where you say, like, if Michigan is going to win this game against USC – what does it have to do in your mind? Put pride aside. That's the number one thing. I feel like that's going to be key in using everyone where they need to be used. Right now, I even said it earlier in the season. If we need to use someone who isn't, quote unquote, the best player in certain positions, we need to use them there. If Kalel is running really good in between the tackles, use him as the main back. If Dono is being very efficient outside of the box, using him as a running back receiver, exposing linebackers, if we need to use a tight end as a run blocker instead of bringing in an offensive lineman and letting them bring in a defense alignment, we need to do that. I feel like we need to put pride aside and be we. I feel like they need to use. <laughs> it's I a mean, hard habit to break. I get oh, it. It's so bad. It's so bad. Jake, Jake Butt was like that the same time. Oh. It took him, I think, a full year before he stopped saying we. So passionate. I love it. Oh. So they need to be very efficient with how they use their players. Kalel played amazing. Lights out. They had over 300 yards rushing versus Arkansas State. I don't know how much that's saying, but it's extremely hard to run 300 yards versus any college team. Um, so yeah, I feel like using the backs and the tight ends efficiently in the run game will be an extreme, extreme key in beating USC. And, um, yeah, that's the offense. All right. I'll go defense then defensively. Obviously you need to be able to shut down the run game similar to how you did in the, uh, the, uh, first and third weeks. You cannot allow what happened against Texas to happen again, where mm -hmm. those long handoffs confuse you. They freeze the linebackers. You need to be able to be aggressive at the point of attack to that. note, wink Martindale, stop blitzing so freaking much, dude. Just like hang back a little bit because it's clearly having an effect on your team. As far as that is concerned, simulate more of those pressures, much like your predecessors who learned that from you, you have that in your capability. You've had games in which you don't blitz a ton. I understand they have an active quarterback. You want to get him off his spot, but if you miss and then you have a guy that isn't on the back end, that could have been that suddenly up front, then you just kind of cost yourself. So wink Martindale, Tone it back a bit. Show that you can change. To Trente's point, put pride aside. I understand you were one of the top NFL defensive coordinators, but you are in college now, my boy. It's time for you to just kind of scale things back and say what's going to work the best because your way so far through three weeks has been inconsistent. Uh, and with that in mind, so you stop the run game. You, you do need to get pressure, and you hope that because the, uh, the USC offensive line is not on the same caliber of Texas, that you can get pressure with those front four. Try to trust those guys to be able to collapse that pocket enough to make Miller Moss uncomfortable. This is a different front than what they've seen so far this year. 
understandably, they'll have a plan with Dance on Lynn, who coached under Wink Martindale with the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, so there is certainly uh, an opportunity uh, to, uh, I mean, he'll understand kind of how to sidestep some of these things, uh, Deanton Lynn, but there is an opportunity still to try to get your, if you got two guys that are supposed to be first rounders up front, maybe three, Derek Moore, Josiah Stewart, either one of those guys could end up being a guy who could rise up if they have a really good season from here on in. Uh, those guys need to actually earn their money, uh, on Saturday and, for the love of all things holy, you got to figure out something with Jair Hill because, well, him and my guy, Jay Sean Barham, who I still love dearly, both of those guys need to play better because they've been targeted constantly in the last two games. You need to find a way to to put them in better positions uh, to succeed. That might mean less man and a heck of a lot more zone. So that is my defensive outlook. All right, we'll finish up here with a, one quick thing. I wasn't going to do it. Let's do it anyway. Off the top of your head, Trente, what's the final score of the game on Saturday? Uh, what's your gut tell you? I didn't. Pre- we didn't prepare this, so it's not like oh, you had this ready to go. So I am- off the top. Um, off the top, I'm gonna say Michigan twenty-eight, USC fourteen. Wow. Boom. Yeah. Okay. Blowout. You're, Let's go. You're confident that the defense is going to pick <laughs> things up. I, however, Absolutely. am not nearly as confident. I think that Lincoln <laughs> Riley uh, has got the same proclivities as Sark. I don't think he's as good as Sark, though. So I don't think that they'll necessarily get to 31 uh, halfway through the game. Uh, I do think that they'll put up points. I think Michigan is going to take care of the football a heck of a lot better than they did uh, each of the first three weeks. Still, though, until I see something different against a top team, which is kind of weird to say about the defending national champions, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna say the offense is gonna be a bit better, but I I, I still don't trust the defense completely. So I'm gonna go with uh, USC 28 and Michigan 24. I think they'll be clutch closer. This won't be that blowout situation, but I still don't trust it yet that they'll win the game. So hopefully I'm wrong, uh, and you know what. My track record of predicting Michigan losses over the last three years is terrible. So that's uh, let's hope that that uh, continues. But this year, unfortunately, I'm one and zero there. Uh, Trente, thanks again. We uh, will meet on the other side. We'll talk about uh, what this looks like uh, post Big Ten play. I mean, post USC in the Big Ten. I mean, that's. It's kind it's of like a weird. Rose Bowl game. I mean, the, the last time that I saw Michigan play USC, I was a student at Michigan in the mid aughts. So it's kind of crazy. Yeah. All right. We'll talk to you again oh, well. soon. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Peace. Later. Later.